Norman Finkelstein is someone that seems perfectly happy to tell lie after lie and do anything he possibly can to undermine Jewish pe- the Jewish people's uh, security and self-determination and is prepared to turn the world upside down in order to make Hamas somehow seem like the good guys. But I want to show you Douglas Murray responding to some of the things, some of the lies that he said. Have a listen to this. Listen to all that with Douglas Murray. Douglas, your response to that interview? Uh, Several things. I've followed the career of Norman Finkelstein for many years. Um, He's notorious for having destroyed his career by, among other things, weaponizing his parents being in the Holocaust to use his career to attack Israel in particular. Uh, I think all societies produce a type of sociopath and psychopath, and I do think that Norman Finkelstein is just such a person. If I could give just one example. He repeatedly in that interview referred to Gaza as a concentration camp. Gaza is no such thing as a concentration camp, and Norman Finkelstein knows that very, very well. Every single Jew was removed from Gaza forcibly in 2005 by the Israeli government. In 2006, the people of Gaza had an election and they elected Hamas. Hamas proceeded to kill Fatah and other Palestinians who did not agree with Hamas. And if anyone is responsible for making Gaza into a prison camp, it is Hamas that uses places like the Shifa Hospital as torture chambers for Palestinians. Now, here's another oddity about it. He kept saying concentration camp about Gaza. Do you, peers know anybody who got out of a concentration camp in 1945 and proceeded to go next door and behead and rape everyone they could find? I don't. But only Norman Finkelstein finds these kinds of comparisons to make and makes them willfully. And by the way, and shame on him for this, What we just heard was Holocaust denial in real time. He pretends we don't know what happened on Mm. the 7th of October. We do know. We do know. And if he doesn't believe the reports he reads, and if he doesn't believe all of the international media, he should have come with me this morning to the pathology department here in Tel Aviv where they are still trying to work out who the bodies are that are arriving. I was standing this morning in Tel Aviv in the mortuary with the doctors who are trying to work out the identities still of the people killed that day. There is so little of some of them, peers, that they can't even extract DNA from them. There is so little of them that sometimes it turns out what was thought to be the charred remains of one person is the remains of two people. People arrive in bags, peers. They arrive in bags with little bits of what is left of their body and maybe a bit of a mobile phone. There was the skull of a, what I said that must be a child's skull. And one of the experts there in the mortuary said, actually, we don't know, because the fire in the house that the, the Hamas lit was so intense in its heat, it could have been a young man's skull that was warped into a smaller size by the heat. So if Norman Finkelstein, practicing his Holocaust denialism in real time, actually wants to practice any of the academic pursuit he has spent his career not pursuing, then I would urge him to go like I did and see the body bags in the mortuary here and see what Hamas did that day. It is disgusting that Norman Finkelstein uses his late parents to defame Israel, to pretend that Israel are the Nazis in this situation. All societies produce sick individuals, but very few people have been produced who are quite as sick as Norman Finkelstein. Would you ever debate with him? I said to you, I refuse, and I refuse for one straightforward reason, is that I know a very, very few people I would, I, I would say I don't debate with. But Norman Finkelstein is one of them. Most people I know in academia stopped having anything to do with him many decades ago. Mm. When he wrote his book, The Holocaust Industry, in 2000, claiming that the Jews were using the Holocaust to sort of make money from and so on, most people wanted to be nowhere near such a fetid individual. By the way, you should know, I once spoke to him when I was trying to get him on JTV. And he told me uh, when I spoke to him briefly, and he had this smirk on his face that he's writing this new book that's 
going to deny that Hamas ever used human shields and all these other things. And I, I, I saw like there's this almost like just psychopathic pleasure he was getting in taunting, taunting Jews and the Jewish state. Individual. I don't think he's somebody you can debate with because I do not want to debate with a Holocaust denier in real time any more than okay. I would debate with a Holocaust denier who was denying the last Holocaust. This was the biggest murder of Jews since the Holocaust and shame on Norman Finkelstein for trying to pretend that that didn't happen or happened differently in real time. It's disgusting. Well said, Douglas, as always. And you know what I think is so important? Because I think sometimes there's a potential that when we see so much rage and anger against Israel, that we can even slightly be a bit intimidated by it. Just remember what he said at the start. Did you see any Jews after the Holocaust respond to the Germans by taking them hostage, by raping and mutilating uh, German civilians? Or even Nazis for that matter. I mean, it's, it is so sick how these people not only justify what Hamas do and the Israel haters do, but somehow say that it's it's um, it's noble. It's sick. We have to be unequivocal in stating that and not get rattled. Far from it. Be absolutely resolute. I'm Ollie Annisfeld and you're watching JTV.